Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca. I'm a fish biologist and ichthyologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of lower card catfishes, also known as whiptail catfishes, plecos, autosynclus, L numbers, etc. within the aquarium trade. And today I'm going to talk about seasonality with aquarium fishes because it's something that might be quite interesting but could also have some surprising benefits. So like all animals, fishes will experience seasons and this depends on where they live. We do mostly keep tropical fishes and this means that the seasons are kind of a little bit different to the more temperate or colder areas where many of us possibly do live and this kind of affects how their biology actually is. While it might not always be obvious, seasonality can be really important on an animal's actual sort of biological clock in a way, that they are physiologically, it affects potentially not just behaviour but hormones and the immune system. So replicating the seasons kind of give a sort of a natural, I guess, moderator or clock and even potentially have other benefits when it comes to their biology, their physiology. So replicating the seasons can also make the fishes more likely to spawn or affect how they're spawning, maybe the numbers of spawns. So it's also very useful if you're thinking about breeding different aquarium fishes. When we're thinking about aquarium fishes in general, most of us will be keeping fishes from the southern hemisphere, which can be a little bit more to get your head around when thinking about the seasons, because theirs is the reverse of ours. They're going into summer now, whereas we're going into winter in the northern hemisphere. So replicating that and thinking about that is kind of important. I'm going to focus mostly on South American fishes because that's what I mostly keep. Whereas I do have some African and Asian, it can differ a little bit and I don't want to kind of make assumptions. But we'll give different sources and papers hopefully in the description below. So when we're thinking about seasons, it's kind of useful to think about how we're going to work for the seasons and husbandry. So I'm going to start off with the wet season, which is in their summer. So, um, which is, yeah, so that'll be in their summer, our winter. So it's at the moment now they're going into the wet season. And you might have noticed some of your fishes might already have that biological clock. I've noticed when it comes to bones, it's just they're more likely to spawn at the moment or they're more active particularly and they're going around a lot more confident and actually just out and about and others as well. So in the wet season they're potentially looking for new resources. This season is when there's a lot more water uh, flowing down, there's just a lot more, uh, the river will expand and rise and you might even get the flooding um, with the well-known sort of Agapo uh, flooded forests. But it's also kind of when you start to see that reproductive behaviour anyway. So how would you replicate it? You'd be thinking about reducing uh, when like you don't have to reduce the temperatures by much, but sometimes they can be reduced quite largely. But also think about water changes where you can drop the temperature. So this is, it would be when you might be doing larger water changes with lower conductivity to replicate that water, um, like that rainwater. Luckily for us in the Northern Hemisphere, it's also kind of when you get the most rainfall. So, that's kind of when you can start collecting lower conductivity um, rainwater, but also it might be easier if you're on any drought restrictions or hose pipe restrictions to do collecting of water in general. Um, although tap water doesn't tend to be low in conductivity anyway. But it means that you kind of can be a little bit more relaxed on dropping that temperature during the water change. The other thing I would say though is electricity costs. If the water temperature is dropping and you're rising it, it's going to cost more to get that temperature to rise. Just a minor thing. But it also does tend to be the time of year when heating and everything else just costs more anyway. 
and heating those tanks will cost more. So sometimes you could experiment with skewing the seasons to do almost the opposite. So also thinking about diet, diet does change in the season. For algivores, I don't think it will change as much. The lower conductivity water, because there's more water, it's sort of a deluge, it's not absorbing as much of the nutrients, um, or more as much of the minerals off any bedrock and stuff like that, whereas it would be when you get less water and less flow rate. So there probably is less minerals, so you might get less bacteria and stuff, but there's going to be other food resources as it's flooding into forest and kind of bringing in nutrients and other sources of food from elsewhere. If you think about food gravures, that's probably going to be when they're having, well, they're going to be eating, consuming the most fruit, the most seeds, and that might be even later in the season, it really depends. But it also kind of is when things are hotter, I guess. But if you've got a that hot, large amount of water, then it might not be as warm as if you've got a sort of a smaller body of water when it goes into a dry season. So think about the dry season next is kind of when you're going to be uh, letting, maybe having a reduced water level. It doesn't mean that you're going to be cutting out water changes because that's not what they're experiencing in nature at all. It's just going to be warmer water, less sort of turnover, higher conductivity, higher temperatures, and you can let that water level drop over time. And this is kind of the trigger to get a lot of fishes kind of in that dry patch before spawning, whereas in the wet season, the high air pressure can trigger a lot of them to actually spawn as well, but not all need that kind of assistance of high pressure. This is when diet does change again, so you're going to be getting maybe, with that higher conductivity, maybe more filter feeders I'd assume, or more algae, more uh, autochthonous uh, resources. So a big thing about this topic people will be wanting to know is about spawning. So this does depend on the fish, not all are seasonal. It seems the some genera are more seasonal than others and this is the same for Corridoridinae. Not all uh, want that change in season to trigger them to spawn or it kind of varies I guess. And law cards are the same, hyphen citrus tend to breed all year and citrus, it depends on the species, but others like Panaculus, uh, Picoltia are much more seasonal. And this time of year when they're going into the wet season is when they're looking to spawn because I guess there's more resources, more space um, to spawn and space is likely a limiting factor when it comes to spawning because if, it, if animals feel cramped they often actually don't spawn as much or they might not spawn at all. So replicating the seasons and also when you're going to that dry, uh, when you're going to that wet season, corresponding water changes with high air pressure. So when you're going to get storms and rainfall. At the moment in the UK, it's particularly and probably Europe, there's a lot of storms at the moment, which is probably what triggers a lot of the fishes, and they can sense that difference in sort of well, they can sense the difference in pressure, and that's triggering spawning. But it might vary depending on what, where you live. There, it could be a really good argument that while they're experiencing our seasons, are they actually just responding to the ones that are biologically sort of in their system anyway? So that's something that people could experiment with. This isn't something that is going to really prevent you from keeping fishes. Some fishes do will probably actually live longer with that cooler season but that could just be because their metabolism is much lower for part of the year uh, rather than just constantly being high so it really depends but it's something to actually explore and look at the different diets there or what constitute what is made up of the diet in the different seasons for the fishes you keep and i'll put a load of papers up for a few different fishes because 
but not all are that well studied. A lot of them, because of accessibility, will be studied more in the dry season than when the water levels are lower, rather than in the wet season when they the water levels are higher, more dangerous. But also, it can depend on the fishes. If they're just whenever they're easier to catch is when they're more likely to be caught. So it tends to be, I think, January onwards is the better season. But also there's like holding time and I guess like that. But anyway, so I'll end this video here. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Don't forget we have a Discord server so to discuss anything or kind of scientific with fishes or anything about aquarium husbandry thinking maybe a little bit beyond the beginner stage and if you like my videos please comment like and subscribe and goodbye